Hey guys, what's up? Um, I'm just giving a rundown of the events that took place this weekend for the Card Market Regional that I was part of. I finished 40th place, not the best, but I went X3 and finished 40th with King Piccolo, which uh, was okay. It wasn't exactly as good as I wanted to do, but uh, overall, considering the level of competition and there was 185 players at that event, uh, and it was my first uh, event with King Piccolo. I did uh, with this new build. I'm, you know, I accept it was a good enough return. I suppose, I suppose, but I didn't get to the top eight. I didn't even get to top sixteen. As I said, I finished forty. Missed out on top thirty two as well, by the smallest amount. But that's not important. We're here to talk about the card market and the PPG top eight, and go through some of the surprises. I was just, I want to go through one one deck in particular. Because of just how uh, much of a shock it was. And you might be looking at the list right now for top A. And you might see what I'm already talking about. So it's obviously not first place. SS2 Trunks and SSB Vegeta finishing first. Ultimately pretty much taking the place of Gohan Icarus. As the top yellow deck of the f and the top deck of the format. Uh, if you saw my profile uh, or on my YouTube channel. Couple two weeks back now, Vegeta and Trunks won uh, the Card Fest London with Joe taking the first spot. This wasn't Joe a card market event. This was another player, but another talent player, obviously, because he finished undefeated. With SS2 Trunks and SSB Vegeta. Then second place, Hatchek, which I'm kind of shocked that Hatchek got second. Um, not so much that's not a good deck, and it's definitely hard to beat, but I think Hatchek has a huge advantage in this event because it wasn't. Uh, with pre-side, uh, instead this was just standard best of one, and if you had a bad matchup, you had a bad matchup, which suits Hatchek, because a lot of decks don't play battle cards with seven or more mana, and you, most decks usually around two, three, especially in this format, so Hatchek would be a great shout to play, and it was a great shout for this player, but it wasn't for the fact that Sin Shenron is also a very competitive deck in this format, in this format, but Sin Shenron's nowhere to be seen here, and it just seems to be, even though Sin is a very strong deck, it seems like people just don't want to play it because it's been around for so long. Uh, I can't really, really see a reason why not to play it, because uh, it's just still super strong, you can play control, you can play aggro, there's no reason it's uh, in terms of competitiveness not to play it, aside from the fact that People are just bored of it. It's been around for a very long time now, so it makes sense that people want to go off and try other decks. Uh, then Dark Broly is the big surprise uh, breakthrough. I have the deck list uh, later on at the end of the video. If you guys want to stay tuned, check that out. Please don't skip. Uh, Dark Broly quite is a shock because that deck was eroded into the ground uh, quite a while ago now, and it just disappeared off of like you never really saw it was the odd event you might see in the top 16 but never a third place it was never really much of a meta contender uh because they kind of just killed the point in the deck with all the erratas having to be activate mains uh so the fact that it got into this top eight is incredible but it was pointed out it's not a bad idea to play this deck a you've got the advantage of uh surprising your opponent in an event that doesn't have pre-siding so you don't have any way you know you see the leader you don't have any way of just uh siding in cards obviously to deal with dark broly in general but on top of that dark broly has a lot of stuff you want it has removal it's got huge big beast battle cards um and a lot of decks don't really deal with it aside from like i think maybe king piccolo uh so if you can avoid bad, some bad matchups yeah, it's not a bad show. It's not a bad show, indeed. Um, then in fourth place we got Gogeta Zeno and fifth place. Not much to say about these decks. Uh, Gogeta Zeno got, you know, a hit by the ban list or got some light taps, but then I got two really really good bits of support in uh, supporting the Dark Empire, and I got that Trunks card that you tap two and play the SSG Trunks. Uh, you tap two blacks and you can play it from your warp, I believe. Uh, Incredible card, it's like dual attack. Uh, so, really, at the end of the day, that ban list didn't do much. 
to her Goji to Zeno and the support from Realm of the Gods means it keeps its place in the competitive scene and probably, you know, you can make a debate that it's the best deck of the format. I'm not, you know, you can make that argument. I wouldn't say it is. I do think it's top three though. Uh, then sixth place, quite surprising because I would have said King Cold was a bad, bad for this format. Uh, it's control heavy, it has to out-resource your opponent, but in a very heavy aggro format with U7 Goku, King Piccolo, a lot of heavy aggro decks you see now. Uh, I just didn't think King Cold could hang. Uh, obviously I was wrong in this instance. I'm not sure what matchups he had, obviously no pre-siding. So, um, that's a surprise for me, but King Cold does do it. And you know, I was welcome more diversity into the format because as you can see with 7th and 8th place uh, it's just Trunks and Vegeta again uh, and obviously as you can see in the chart there uh, Trunks and Vegeta take up 3 of the 8, top 8 which is 37.5% if you <laughs> you can read for yourself um, but this kind of just spells out that yellow is by far the best colour um, obviously black is black and yellow are the two best colours in Europe, um, they didn't. They were both the prime targets of the ban list, sort of. Well, actually, the Gohan leader was the prime hit for yellow and Cell Surge, and then Gogeta Zeno got like three slaps in the wrist. As you can see, it hasn't really affected the deck, especially with the support got in the new deck in the new set. Um, which, in my opinion, I think the deck's better than what what it was pre ban list anyway. So. That that's that's your view. I do think this kind of spells out that yellow does need to be addressed. I think either poutine or repost probably should get the hit because yellow is just going to keep dominating. And yellow's obviously every color gets support in the next set. I hope yellow doesn't get the best cards, but we will see. We'll see. Um, moving on then to the PPG. Uh, as you can see, I don't know who finished fifth and I don't know who finished seventh so that's disappointing but you know if I want to get this video out by tomorrow uh, I couldn't search any longer but first place as we the man we were just talking about Gogeta Zeno won it for the PPG uh, in first place um, obviously just said stronger than it was pre ban list thanks to the realm of the gods uh, then second place was U7 Goku. U7 Goku seems to be a lot more popular in North America than it does in Europe. I think that's from what I'm seeing anyway. Um, I would argue to say that it's more meta in North America from what we've seen. It seems to get into the list a lot more. But aggro is a lot more common to see. I think Europe seems to favor their control decks a bit more. Uh, then in third place, it's Hatchiak. It, again, just like Card Market event. Since Shenron didn't seem to come out for this tournament to deal with Hatch, so Hatch was able to thrive in this court meta, and as you can see, it gets another spot in the top eight. Fourth place was King Piccolo. I think this is one of the strongest decks to format, the strongest color for red. Even though U7 Goku finished second, I think they're very close, but I do think King Piccolo, even though not this event, but I do think in terms of strength, uh, King Piccolo is just a little stronger. Uh, fifth place, unknown. I'm sorry guys, um, somebody else will figure out, find it for you. 6th uh, place, SS4 Vegeta. Um, I just saw it written down as Ram, SS4 Ram, which uh, I can only imagine is Vegeta, because I don't know any other SS4 deck that ramps. Um, but it, bearing in mind, if, it is, if I'm correct and it's Vegeta, fantastic. I love that deck. I think it's one of the most interesting blue decks. I love the fact that... Uh, your it doesn't just start off with the standard set one top one play card search. You kind of have to start it off from what I've seen the majority of people start off with getting the Kamehameha and attack top one and play that to guarantee that you'll get the next energy. And the more you see that extra card, the more guaranteed you are to be able to ramp up, especially the fact that you have the fantastic super combo that helps with ramping and you have the Zeno. Uh, Unison that helps ramp. It's really really cool. I really enjoy that deck. It's one of the only blue decks I enjoy. But yeah, I love seeing a, a blue deck that's not Soul Striker in the top eight, and maybe Soul Striker either fits in the fifth or seventh. But um, I don't know. 
Uh, seven place, I said. And then eight place is Janemba Mill. Which, I played Janemba Mill at the card market event. And I think Piccolo ran, ran, runs right through it. It doesn't affect it all that much. I <laughs> milled myself more than Janemba did. Um, but, um, I do think Janemba Mill does do a lot to other strategies. Uh, U7 Goku is pretty much the reason we're seeing Mill pop up more and more. Is because U7, as I said, has a huge uh, representation list. Uh, so anything that allows or stops your opponent, or you know, that deck runs through itself pretty quickly. So obviously, as you already know, Cooler Mill, Janemba Mill are pretty much what you want to play if you're if you know everyone else around you or figure a lot of people around you are going to be playing in U7. So. That's why Mill's Tribing, uh, it can do well against other decks, I, as well as Gogeta Zeno too. Don't, don't forget about Gogeta Zeno because that deck just rips right through itself. So Mill is actually kind of in a good spot. Um, this format, but it's not good enough. Like, you're very much writing your luck on your matchups because if you're not playing uh, a lot of black decks, you're not playing a lot of red red decks, or the U7 Goku deck, if you're playing something like King Piccolo or that, it's... Probably not going to be great for you. Uh, you're not going to have a great time. From my experience anyway. But you'd have to ask these mill players what their experience is there. Uh, if it's worth it. But I, I personally don't think... Uh, I think the more further we go into this competitive scene, the less we will see with mill. And now for the main event, I'm going to show off... Uh, I found on the Discord the deck list, the Dark Broly deck list I finished third. And it is uh, quite, kind of interesting... It's got obviously the Dark Brody engine as you'd expect and a lot of the generic black stuff, but it's got some pretty neat neat um, tech choices. So obviously we're playing uh, the Gogeta blocker. Uh, it's a very good card in the Gogeta Zeno deck, I never really thought, but obviously if you're playing a lot of the Vegetas, if you're playing the uh, Goku and the Vegeta 3000 power over on 6s, uh, prom the, those cards anyway. Uh, then you might as well run. If you're running those ones, you're usually running for thwarting. But seeing as your you know thwarting is unique, you might as well get a blocker out of it. If you have thwarting on the field, you might as well fuse away for a blocker. And uh, also works as great removal. Uh, then it's playing the Dark Broly engine. All those cards except for the red one got eroded, and you know it's, it's Dark Broly. We know what it does. They're just big 3000 power bodies. That's some removal, so it's a pretty good idea for this meta. People aren't going to expect it. Um, you got the Stinger, which you never really see. Um, Darkness Blast Stinger. You didn't really see in old lists of Dark Broly, but for this one, it seemed to work out for him. Uh, then we've got the Super Combos. He's running a 4. Obviously, every black deck runs this. Or most anyone that plays mono black, anyway. Promo card and SS4 Son Goku and SS4 Vegeta, they run hand in hand to bring out this boy. Uh, the Thwarting the Dark Empire. I do think if a ban list were to come up, or the only way to really get address black at this point, I think is to hit Thwarting. Uh, because a lot of decks do just run, you know, 4 this, 4 this, and then 3 this. Because it's the best black card and you can just tap 1 for it. So if your opponent were to remove it, just tap one, fuse again. You're playing most decks are playing a lot of Goku's and Vegeta's. Uh, this uh, deck is not playing that many. It's only playing the four, four of each. Uh, there's no. I suppose it can fuse away. They might be able to fuse away the Son Goku. Eventually begins in the super combo. Um, I don't know if it says Goku GT down there, or I'm not sure what it says down in the traits area. Um. Then we've got Space Time Unraveled. Yeah, it's great for this format, especially in the card market. Uh, in the card market events, if you went to time, you were, you were both on the same life. Um, it would be decided whoever had more battle cards. So, obviously bringing this up. I don't know if at any point this helped win him a game on time. But, uh, for this, content, for this uh, match or format... Especially this uh, is a great SCR. It's always been a great SCR board wipe. Fantastic card. Uh, just a Sumkai time. She's just a decent uh, 
Protect choice for black. Obviously, counter attack, blocker, negate the attack, play her. Get her blown up by a uh, Piccolo Unison. Uh, Gravy this is played a lot in black decks uh, recently. It was also played in Zamasu, surprisingly. Uh, yeah, it's just good good tech again. So, Goku eventually begins, so this card gets you the four star ball, which is quite surprising. Initially, when Dark Broly came out, they were playing four four star balls, and now we've at this, you know, we come out the other side with the ban list and it come, and four star ball reemerges as a one of and they play that one card to be able to add the four star ball. Also, um, it's pretty good, uh, pretty smart. Just you want more power. Uh, I'm not sure if the adventure begins does more for his deck, but I'm not sure if it does anything more than get the four star ball. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Uh, probably does, but. We will move forward. Sporting the Dark Empire is a what was missing from black. Every other color had theirs. Uh, version of the uh, uh, testing that position is obviously the one that annoys most people because red is quite tough to deal with, especially whenever you're missing the flows of blockers. Um, Sport the Dark Empire is actually really, really good for Dark Broly because they don't have the Dark Broly cards, as you can see, have zero combo power. So trying to get out of big attacks, you know, coming out, the deck doesn't really do that. Uh, especially if you're four or if you're five or more alive, uh, you can your super combo is not live. Uh, Spring the Dark Empire, so that helps with that. Take life, you can avoid a double strike and or maybe two double strikes. Petrification, just a fantastic black card to be able to just it can stop your opponent right in their step, get rid of their best card uh, for an entire turn. Uh, so petrification play that one great card uh, protector to, of the people uh, great great black generic or great black card uh, pretty much again will protect your leader for an entire turn because he gains plus 5,000 for each attack so most players won't bother wasting an attack on that super kamehameha uh, great removal great counterplay just warping your opponent's battle cards before they can play absolutely uh, hurts King Piccolo a lot when it gets Super Kamehameha. I think every time I play black and I try to get that drum out, Super Kamehameha uh, definitely stopped me in my tracks. I'm trying to bring out my uh, Demon Clan cards. So while we're running in any black leader, um, that can run the card. Then we got the Demigra. This was always being played in Dark Broly. It's a great overwhelm card. Uh, 3000 power. There's not much to say, I think everybody kind of knows about this Demigra card, they've all experienced it. Uh, Black Mass Saiyan, great protection. Um, yeah, it's just, I assume again, like, support the Dark Empire. This is run because your Dark Brolies have zero combo power, but you have to run a large amount of them. Except for the red one, he has combo power. Don't know why. And then the Champa, so pretty much how you're going to win is by attacking one of these big boys. Uh, probably not him because he's a blocker. They have 3,000 power, most leaders are going to struggle to combo four cards to get out of it, but then, you know, if you have two life, you all know what champ does, it gives you a double strike plus 10,000. And it's probably going to be game, but, you know, you got your super combos, you got your four star ball, you know, it's a strong deck, uh, you got, to, and then, you know, twarding your opponent, as, twarding has double strike too, so. Overall, black is a strong deck, it's got a lot of strong cards. And I don't particularly think Dark Broly is so much that the best black leader. Uh, obviously, I think Gogeta Zeno is. I, but maybe it's in the running for second. I don't think it is even the second best leader. But with the elements of surprise and just how good black is as a color with twarding, with supporting the Dark Empire. Uh, and then obviously great generic cards like Super Kamehameha and you know, Protect the People. It kind of proves that you can kind of run any leader with a small en any black leader with a small engine have success. Uh, I think there's other shout outs like the Supreme Kind of Time Leader that came out a few sets ago is also quite strong. Uh, there's also the SS4 Goku that's super aggro, the one that has double strike. That's another black leader that I think is being slept on. But yeah, that's going to kind of wrap up the video. I decided to show off this deck profile as opposed to. Other ones just because I don't think any of us had money on Dark Broly topping. But 
Uh, um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not sure. I was never a fan of this deck back in the day at full power, but nowadays it's a bit more interesting. Uh, a little bit more interesting to see it. Will we see this in tournaments going forward? Now that people know about it, I'm unsure. Especially if other tournaments have pre siding uh, People will have more removal. People are already kind of siding in or thinking about Xenogogeta and a lot of the stuff that deals with Xenogogeta or anything you would side for Xenogogeta would probably be good to side in for this deck so we might see it obviously the player who played this also I think he finished 8 in some European event with this deck so he's just a really really good pilot with the deck I don't think we'll be seeing uh, a huge uptake in Dark Broly. We won't see a resurgence in my personal opinion. This player might continue to have success with the deck. He probably will. He's a great player. But that's all I gotta really say on that. Um, you know, comment down below how you've, what well, your experience is with the card market, the PPG event. Uh, you know, what we're playing, what are your matchups. How do you feel about the current format? I'm kind of, I like the format. It's a huge improvement on the last format. But, you know, there's still issues. I think I'm kind of, like a lot of players, pretty tired of seeing yellow at the top of the to uh, totem pole. And I'll, well, it'd be nice to see a different color. It'd be nice to see green come back in something that's not just hand rip. You know, maybe. Maybe one day. Uh, we'll see post-ultimate squad what the meta is going to be like. I hope that shuffles, shuffles things up a lot. Uh, but we'll see. I think blue might come out the best of that. We haven't seen blue as a top a top deck for a long time since I think blue baby really it just feels like forever ago and yeah that's all I gotta say on that if you liked the video please leave a like if you didn't like the video you might as well leave a like subscribe if you're new or if you forgot to subscribe from the previous video anyway hope you have an awesome day and goodbye.